I remember a book my school's librarian read to my class when I was in second grade. It was picture day. I had a, my hair pulled up in obnoxiously high pigtails, and I wore a long silk dress with little daffodils sewed on to the seams of it. She usually read us stories like The Little Engine That Could or Goodnight Moon, but this time it was different. As she showed us the cover, waving it around as if she were a showgirl off a wheel of fortune, our eyes were in pure excitement and wonder. God, if only I could remember the name of that book. It was a short story about a little Asian girl who would fly her kite every day in the field beside her house. She had always wondered what it would be like if she were a little boy. As the story gets deeper, we go farther and farther into her lifetime until, when she's very old, she dies. From there, she's taken up to a different atmosphere, a different world, where she is led by an overpowering being. You can see how she is hovering in her nightgown with the midst of what seems to be an infinite number of stars. The voice. It guided her. She goes through a process of what she wants to be in her next life. Millions upon millions of figures of different life forms are shown before her eyes at such an accelerated speed. And all of a sudden, the pictures stop. It lands on the little, little boy. I want to be a boy, she says to the voice. And as the next page is being flipped, our little bums begin to raise higher and higher as we eagerly wait to hear what happens next. The last page had no words, just a picture. A picture of a little boy flying a kite. Why to this day do I still remember this book? Why, after all these years, is it still locked in my memory? It must have some type of significance. Some type of meaning behind it. My brain wanted me to remember it. And I finally know what it means. There is a belief that we never die. A belief that we all have eternal souls guiding and loving us unconditionally, moving from person to plant to animal. But most of us forget that we have these amazing souls because we are so busy and too distracted to listen. I have been raised to believe that there is one God, a single, omniscient being who controls everything and anything all at the same time. But could there be more than that? Instead of a heaven, an internal happiness, could there be another option? So I started researching. Life after death. Nothing. Is heaven real? Other than a bunch of Bible verses, nothing. When you die, is there something else that can happen besides going to heaven? And it was like a sign from another world almost when I saw one side blinking, almost spazzing out of control. Drawn to it, I click it. From there, I was brought to a website dedicated to reincarnation, a site which helped me understand that belief. And I started loving the idea of it. The idea that every living thing has a soul, has a purpose. We all have a purpose. Even that little cucumber bush that grows outside your garden, or that grumpy old cat who wanders around the neighborhood searching for food. It is said that when we choose a new form of life, we have this certain destiny which we're supposed to accomplish in our lifetime. So that led me to believe in the term that we are all well aware of, known as fate. Whatever bumps in the road, if you will, whatever struggles you overcome, just understand that everything you surpass has to do with fate. You are meant to do this. This rough period in your life will pass, and every moment like that will as well. So as time goes on, as you get deeper and deeper into your life story, just be aware that your soul has been given a duty to accomplish something great. And who knows, you could be that grumpy old cat one day.